All right, welcome to your .LA Weekly Recap of the hottest news in the LA tech media and startup scene. I'm Kelly O'Grady, .LA's chief host and correspondent. I'm gonna take you through the top five headlines from the week so you have everything you need to know to stay smart on the space. So let's jump in. All right, I have your weekend weed plans here. By far the biggest story was the end to our Green Rush series. After months of investigation, our own Tammy Abdullah captivated us all with a tale of inexperience, Russian investment, frivolous spending, and of course, weed. Now, here's how it wrapped up. After LA's Genius Fund spent up a storm with nothing to show but failed products and 1.7 million pounds of hemp, they're embroiled in a whistleblower retaliation lawsuit brought forth by their ex-CEO. All their assets are frozen until the lawsuit is closed. And to complicate matters, the Russian oligarch investor, Dmitry Bosov, wound up dead of an apparent suicide. Now, his family has called for a deeper investigation into the circumstances surrounding his death to determine if there was any foul play. Check out our eight minute recap on IGTV for some exclusive video footage and be sure to read the story this weekend. It's a real page turner, especially when you pair it with some white widow super cheese. This is California after all. Next up, a lot of folks are wondering if Trump's executive order that will bar US transactions related to Tencent owned WeChat will start to ripple through California tech. Now, LA-based Riot Games is just one of many companies Tencent owns. It also holds shares in Activision Blizzard, Snap, and Spotify, among others. There are two key concerns among companies right now. The first is whether the Chinese investment hose is gonna need to be turned off. And the second centers on what being associated with a company like Tencent right now may do for brand perception. Only time will tell what the future holds, but what is clear is the Trump's administration's concerns about Chinese tech companies. For more on this from Sam Blake, check out our website. And in an unfortunate turn of events, Hop Skip Drive has laid off staff as the pandemic has ravaged growth plans. The latest round follows an earlier one in March that saw the ride-sharing company for kids lay off about 10% of its staff. The startup had spent the summer building COVID-safe standards for an abnormal school year, but many school districts have changed plans from an in-person or hybrid program to a completely virtual curriculum. Now, it's yet another casualty due to the pandemic that has all of us wondering what's the startup scene going to look like when we come out of it. For more on this from Francesca Billington, be sure to check out our website. And in some investing news, Water Tower Adventures, led by startup veterans Derek Norton and Jeremy Milken, has closed its second fund, a larger and more ambitious sequel to the one they launched three years ago. With $50 million, they're aiming to be the first institutional money into 35 companies over the next three years, with checks ranging anywhere from $250,000 to $1 million. Fund 2 will continue the digital consumer focus while adding something the firm calls Evolving Enterprise, a category that includes companies like Slack and Salesforce. For more on this from Ben Bergman, check out the link below. And now to round out our top five, Valence is looking to be more than just a LinkedIn for black professionals. It's also trying to narrow the wealth gap with the help of algorithms. So the social networking platform just got a five and a quarter million boost from a series A round and is aiming to develop a customization engine for people in their career journey. Valence is looking to take data a step further and be able to customize the reason for interactions as opposed to just a first level connection or geography or a school. For more on this from Rachel Ranga, check out our website. Okay, last thing, we hosted a really interesting discussion on the cannabis industry this week, linking back to our Green Rush story. So Tammy Abdullah and a panel of executives took us through how cannabis-related businesses live in a legal limbo, even though California is home to the largest legal pot market in the world. Check out our website for the playback if you missed it. All right, that wraps up my weekly recap. For more on these stories, more news this week, or to check out the awesome events we're hosting, visit us on our website, sign up for our daily newsletter, and be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss my exclusive video content. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kelly O'Grady for .LA.